So I don't know what it is, but recently I've been really into weird looking foam clog style sneakers. And maybe it is something to do with the fact that a lot of brands have been dropping really great versions of that weirdly specific style of shoe. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing another shoe that fits into that category, the Salehi Benbury Crocs in the Cloud Stratus colorway. Really quick though, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Soul Premise. Soul Premise. Soul Premise. Soul Premise. I'm not... That was like a lot better in my head. So by now, you've definitely heard me talk about Soul Premise. Soul Premise is a bag company that makes bags specifically designed for your sneakers. And this bag in particular is my favorite because it can carry up to five pairs of sneakers. Two pairs in the front, two pairs in the back, a laptop sleeve in the middle, and another compartment in the bottom for an extra pair of sneakers and a couple pairs of Bob Gary socks. You can carry everything in this bag, it's crazy. Not only that, but their bags are TSA approved, which means you can bring them onto the airplane with you, put them in the overhead compartment rather than storing them underneath the plane and checking them. Bro. What are you, come on bro. Sorry about that, sorry. So if you wanna check out Soul Premise for yourself and grab any of the awesome bags that they have on their website, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below and use my code SETH for 40% off. So you may remember from last year, I reviewed one of the first colorways of the Salehi Bembury Crocs collaboration, the green colorway. Now, I don't remember exactly what that colorway was called or what the tan colorway was called, but either way, they were both fire and I loved them. And so when it was announced that Salehi Bembury and Crocs were once again reuniting to release three new colorways of the Pollux Clog, I was stoked. So this is obviously one of the colorways that dropped. This is the Stratus colorway. In addition to this colorway, there was also the Urchin, which came in sort of a light blue, and the Crocodile, which came in a neon green. All three of these colorways released between the 23rd and the 24th of May 2022 for a retail price of 85 bucks. And as I'm sure you were able to tell if you were trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, it's still very difficult to grab a pair of the Pollux Crocs, even though they released three new colorways and I feel like they produced more of these colorways. As I usually do, I grabbed this sneaker on GOAT through instant ship and paid way more than I probably should have for this shoe. I'm not going to tell you guys because I'm a little embarrassed, but uh, unfortunately, GOAT sent me a size bigger than I ordered. I grabbed a size 8 because these shoes do fit big. They sent me a size 9 and that's weird because that's it's never actually happened to me before from GOAT. They've never sent me the wrong shoe or the wrong size before. And I buy a lot of shoes from GOAT. I'm talking like five or six pairs a month. It's It gets stupid. All that aside, I am still very excited to be able to review this shoe for you guys and tell you guys about all the really cool features and details that make up this brand new pair of Salehi Benbury Crocs. But before we dive any further into the shoe, let's first take a look at the packaging because it seems like on this new release of the Salehi Benbury Crocs, they did change things up a little bit. So the first Pollux Crocs release actually came in this really cool box that I have right up there against my wall that actually had this really nice almost vacuum formed cardboard shape that went around the shoes and kind of held them in place. This time around though we just get pretty standard looking cardboard box. This box is still pretty cool looking, but I'm not gonna lie, I am still a little bit disappointed. I feel like they made a lot more of these, so they probably couldn't afford sending out this kind of crazy packaging for every single pair that they produced. This time around, I'm sure the production numbers were higher, so they tried to cut costs a little bit. That's only my assumption though. I have no idea how many pairs of these they actually produced or why they changed the packaging. That's just what I'm guessing. Now, as you can see, the shoes come in this cardboard box with what looks like a print of the outsole of the shoe, which you guys might be able to tell is actually Salehi Bembury's fingerprint which I think is super cool. And that's sort of the whole design concept behind these shoes. I think it's incredible. We'll get to that a little bit later. On the side of the box, you've got the Crocs and Salehi Bembury logo. You've got the Crocs logo on the front of the box. And then on the other side, you've got the Crocs Pollux Clog right there, which is the official name of the silhouette. But getting to the size tag, as I mentioned, unfortunately, they sent me a size nine instead of a size eight. My other pair of Pollux Crocs is also a size nine. I really wish I had sized down to those, but it is what it is. That's why I tried to grab a size eight in this pair. But again, it is what it is. The official colorway, of this shoe is actually almost white. Although the colorway of this shoe is referred to as the Stratus colorway online, the official name of, I guess, the color that they used is almost white. It's probably the color of the material or the color of the Pantone or whatever, I don't know, but the actual color of the shoe is almost white and the name of the shoe is Stratus. But putting the box off to the side, let's now get into the shoes themselves, the incredible looking Salehi Bembury Pollux Crocs in the Stratus colorway. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I, for some reason, have a very specific and weird interest in oddly shaped foam clog style shoes. I don't know what it is, but I think that they're fire and I love the fact that they're uh 
a very multi-use sort of shoe. You can wear these in the summer. You can wear these in cooler temperatures with a pair of socks, like a pair of apothecary socks, which you guys may have noticed in the on-foot portions of this video. This is a very versatile style of shoe, and that's why I love these clog style shoes so much. And particularly when they're designed to look as insane as these look, when they're as eye-catching as this, I just love them. I just love weird looking shoes. So design and construction wise, this shoe is pretty much identical to the original Polex clog, which I have so much trouble saying. I've done like seven takes saying Polex Krog. I don't know why I keep doing that, slip of the tongue, whatever. Regardless, this shoe looks just like the original, except in a different colorway. And that makes a lot of sense to me because the molds that they used to make this shoe were probably incredibly expensive, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars because you had to make a new mold for every Every single size of this shoe and obviously looking at the design of this sneaker it's not a very simple shoe you've got a lot of different nooks and crannies that are probably very difficult to sort of carve out in these metal molds plus not only that you also have pieces of rubber that are co-molded to this foam so even though it looks like a one-piece construction it's actually a very complex and difficult thing to mold and so even just making one small change to this shoe like maybe punching out another hole or moving one of these lines would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to do because they'd have to completely remake all of the molds and again I'm sure this shoe would was insane to mold because of all the different shapes. I'm sure all the little draft angles, which means the angles at which the mold kind of pulls off the shoe, are also very well thought out. They all kind of have to be angled towards each other so that the mold can actually remove itself from this uh, foam material. And you can also see along the midsole of this shoe or the midsole portion of this shoe, you've got a parting line which shows you where the two different actions of the mold come apart. And just like my very complex explanation as to why they probably didn't change anything on this shoe, this is also a very complex shoe to make. All of that being said, starting off on the medial side of the toe of the sneaker, you've got this piece of semi-translucent rubber that actually wraps all the way around the toe of the sneaker to the forefoot of the shoe. I'm probably gonna call this shoe a sneaker like seven times throughout this review. It's just because I'm so used to saying sneaker. I realize this is not a sneaker, this is a clog, this is a shoe. I'm very well aware because you guys always let me know in the comment section, but just letting you know, it's a mistake. It's my bad, I'm sorry. Personally, I really love this piece of rubber that wraps over the big toe because it definitely adds to the durability of the sneaker. Whenever you accidentally kick something like a stair or maybe something on the floor, it's usually on this part of your foot and by adding this extra piece of rubber, you give the shoe a little bit more longevity, which I really like. And the material change also adds a nice little element of interest. It really separates itself from the rest of the shoe and makes it a little bit more dynamic than it would be if it was just all one piece of material. Continuing back in the shoe, you get to this really nicely sculpted, almost white Crocs foam. It's actually very soft to the touch, although it does still hold its structure very nicely. And honestly, from what I can tell, it's very similar to the foam that they use in standard Crocs. However, interestingly, these little ridges actually add to the structure of the upper of the shoe, so it makes it less flimsy than a standard pair of Crocs, which I really like. On the top of the foot, you've got these little punch outs that go all the way through the foam. However, unlike a standard pair of Crocs, you can't actually put gibbets in them because they're not circular shaped. However, for the people grabbing the Salehi Bembury Crocs, I don't know how interested they are in gibbets. So for those people, I think they're not gonna miss them, including myself. And because of that, these punch outs serve primarily as an aesthetic detail and also a nice way of adding breathability to the shoe. I mean, this is actually a great summer shoe. It looks good. It comes in a bright summery colorway. It's very breathable, it's very comfortable, and you can hose it off if it gets dirty. I'm gonna have to grab the two other colorways, aren't I? Probably. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, these ridge details are not actually random. They're there because they're part of Salehi Bembury's fingerprint, which can be found on the outsole of the shoe. So the outsole of the shoe is this fingerprint and all of the little ridges are actually pulled all the way around the top of the sneaker and create this really cool sort of abstract bone-like looking structure on the top. It's such a cool concept. I love it. I know it's not for everybody, but I really do dig it. Moving inside the shoe, you have a pretty standard Crocs footbed. It's not exactly the same as a standard pair of Crocs, but it's pretty similar. Embossed into the heel, you've got the Crocs and Salehi Bembury logo and surrounding that you've got these really interesting sort of textural details that kind of massage your foot when you're wearing this shoe it feels great now as far as sizing and fit like I mentioned earlier on in the video this shoe does not fit true to size in fact you probably want to grab this shoe a whole size down I don't know what it is about Crocs for some reason they always fit a full size big I'm a size 9 usually granted I do have a pretty narrow foot so I always go down a full size to a size 8 unfortunately these shoes also didn't come in half sizes so if you're a half size definitely go down down at least the half size. Continuing back in the shoe, you get to the Croc strap. Now, unlike a standard pair of Crocs, it doesn't come in the same sort of foam material that you find on the rest of the shoe. This time around, it comes in sort of a nylon band that you can actually adjust the sizing on, which is definitely nice. One thing that I really like about this strap is that you can actually remove it and replace it with a different color strap. Unfortunately, unlike the initial release of this shoe, this time around, you were only given one color of strap. On the last release, you were given a second strap, just in case you wanted to switch out the colors. But on this release, that's just what you get. It is what it is. It's like not getting a second 
second pair of laces. For most people, they're probably not going to switch out the strap anyway, but it was nice to have the option on the original release of the shoe. On the back of the strap, you have this foam ankle pad, which has the Crocs and Salehi Bembry logo embossed into it. And then on the inside of the strap, you've got the sizing of the shoe, size 9 men's, size 11 women's. And then continuing around even farther back in the shoe, you get to more of that textured, almost white foam. And then wrapping up onto the back of the heel, you've got more of that semi-translucent rubber. Then finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, like I've already mentioned a bunch at this point, you've got Salehi Bembry's fingerprint, which I think is super cool. It's an awesome concept. On the forefoot of the shoe, you've got some of that semi-translucent rubber, as well as on the heel of the shoe. And then in the midfoot, you've just got exposed, almost white foam. As much as I love this Stratus colorway, my one reservation about it is that it probably will get pretty dirty after wearing the shoe a lot. Obviously, you can hose it down and clean it, but I think once the outer layer of this foam is worn off on the bottom of the shoe and probably on the sides of the shoe, you will have some dirt kind of sticking to it that you probably can't get out. But until then, it'll look super fresh on foot. So overall, just like with the previous release of the Salehi Bembry Polex Crocs, I am just as much in love with this silhouette as I was back in December when the shoe first released. And I think the three new colorways that have just dropped, although they were very difficult to get, are insanely clean. And the good news is the resale price of these is nowhere near as bad as it was on the original release of the shoe. I think Salehi Bembry absolutely knocked this collaboration out of the park. I think every collaboration that he's done so far has been fire. I especially love the New Balance collaborations. I have just about all of them. And uh, this one is just another awesome Salehi Bembury collaboration to add to the collection. But that pretty much wraps up my review of the new Salehi Bembury Crocs. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on the new colorways that just dropped and whether you're able to grab any of the colorways. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.